Hey everybody, it's Caleb Curry with Caleb Curry Reports and Predicts. So usually, I, uh, you know, uh, will just screen capture my screen and we'll go over polls and stuff. Uh, so I decided once a week, I'm just going to do kind of a news roundup um, of just a, dip, a couple different things. And I won't really go, I mean, I may go over a poll or two, but uh, not anything that we need to break down. This is just, you know, just a quick recap of some major events from around the world, um, especially in the political sphere. Um, so, and today, mainly, we're going to talk about Brexit. Before we get to that, um, I just got on Twitter, uh, so I follow political polls on Twitter, so if you want to keep up with political polls, it's uh, it's a really good Twitter page for that, um, and they just tweeted an interesting tweet, and it is the uh, Georgia Democrat presidential primary showing Joe Biden at 41, Elizabeth Warren at 17, uh, is Bernie Sanders at 8, Kamala Harris at 6, and Pete Buttigieg at 5. And so it probably, uh, so what's important about that is it shows that Joe Biden still has that firewall. Everybody talks about his southern firewall. He's doing very well among the African-American electorate. And um, so maybe that shows going forward that he has his firewall built. And if he can just get to the South and to these states that have um, high African-American populations, like the early state of South Carolina, that it will be able to block Elizabeth Warren or anybody that's challenging him because Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders and Pete Buttigieg don't have that type of support uh, among the African-American community and Kamala Harris may be able to get that if she can go that far and with her being at this about where Pete Buttigieg is is not good uh, in a strong in a southern state like that for her and like I said in my video the other day she's really on on life support I mean the, the a new Iowa poll came out that showed Elizabeth Warren barely ahead of Joe Biden but Kamala Harris is back at, at the end of the pack. Um, you know, in that, that poll, Pete Buttigieg was third, Bernie fourth, and then there's Kamala Harris just limping along. And they said that her campaign has gone on in all in in Iowa. And it just seems like it's not going that well for her. And uh, so we'll see what she can do. Pete Buttigieg uh, poll came out also yesterday in New Hampshire, and it was pretty good for him. Pretty good news. So uh, he's he's a little up there. I mean, if he wins Iowa, he could you know he will become a major player. The point is he has to get up to <laughs> being able to compete in Iowa, and it looks like Bernie Sanders is not doing well in Iowa, and that's really bad news for the Bernie Sanders campaign. I, I don't think it's uh, – I was listening to a podcast yesterday. I don't think it's in all be all for him. I think there's other states, like he's doing better in New Hampshire, and there will be other states if he does not win Iowa. The same with Joe Biden. Um, I do think it's kind of make a break for Elizabeth Warren and Pete Buttigieg to, in Iowa. If Elizabeth Warren uh, wins Iowa – I think, and, and then goes on to win New Hampshire after that. <laughs> I think it puts just a huge shot in her campaign, a good boost. And I do think that it'll make her incredibly hard to beat. But then if uh, Pete Buttigieg wins Iowa, it may help him a lot in New Hampshire and it may make him relevant. Not think he, I don't think he would win, unlike Elizabeth Warren. But, but then if, uh, but, Bernie Sanders is not like that. He doesn't have to win Iowa, and I think one of those two have to win Iowa. If Joe Biden wins it or uh, Bernie Sanders ends up winning it, it's it's over for Pete Buttigieg probably. And if Elizabeth Warren can't go on to win New Hampshire, it's probably over for her as well. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes forward. The other big news that I kind of want to go over is in uh, the U.K. with Brexit. So a little background for some people that don't know. So right now, um, Boris Johnson, who's the prime minister, prorogued parliament. So what, what that means is he just suspended parliament and he did it for a queen's speech. So they proroguing is just ending the session of parliament and bringing in a new session of parliament. And this usually happens once a year. And he, 
Uh, they usually do a queen speech, is where, and that's just where the government lines out what their policies are and what they want to do. And so he did that. But what happened was uh, it was a very long, it was a lot longer than they have ever uh, had in recent history, not in the history of Britain, but it's the longest since the uh, World War II. And so what happened was they challenged it, and it in Scotland and in England, and it went all the way to the English Supreme Court, the U- UK Supreme Court, and they ruled he unlawfully suspended Parliament. So starting actually today, uh, this all happened yesterday, they are now back uh, in session. Uh, Speaker John Burkow said that they had to sit today at 1130 in, in English Standard Time and uh british standard time and that's what they would be doing and so they're right now holding session in parliament again uh what they will do in parliament um you know they'll just continue the regular business um and continue down and 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 it'll be they'll just continue what they were doing before brexit now the other big news is so party conference season is in full swing, and this past week has been the Labor Party conference. Um, and with an election on the horizon, the last thing you want is infighting, especially when you're down in the polls to the Tories. That's exactly what Labor decided to do, was have some infighting. So uh, they tried to oust the deputy leader, that who is a little bit more moderate than Jeremy Corbyn, uh, that didn't work. Um, he was not ousted, but they did do a study whether they will have a deputy leader going forward. Um, they voted to affirm Jeremy Brexit's, uh, I mean, Jer- Jeremy Corbyn's Brexit policy, which is no, uh, not to support a no deal Brexit and try to get a really good deal with the European Union, which was a little shocker, uh, because there is a lot of remainers, um, in labor. One of the most interesting things came was the CBS and YouGov did a poll of labor members and it showed that over 70% of them, for example, were um, wanted to, uh, over 70% of them wanted to, uh, were not proud of the British history in the last 300 years, which I thought was kind of crazy, right? Because Britain did a lot of bad things. I mean, all countries at that time did, but they've done a lot of good things as well. But they weren't they weren't proud of British history. Uh, it also showed that um, they wanted to get rid of the monarchy, which I mean, it's kind of. <laughs> I mean, that's not that's never go, that's probably never going to happen. But it was something that that was you know uh, was a headline. They also um, uh, most of them supported a general strike to bring down the government and have an election. So the members want to have an election, but the leadership um, and all and all Labor MPs, members of parliament, when they had a chance to call a new election, didn't do it. Not a single one of them voted for the last Boris Johnson's last call. But the members want a general strike to cause a new election. Now, I thought that tidbit was very interesting. The most interesting part was that... Um, And this isn't a majority, but a plurality of labor members. Uh, So more labor members blame uh, the British government for the the terrorist attacks by Al-Qaeda and ISIS. And and during the Troubles, the bombings in England, um, they blame the British government more for for that and they blame al-qaeda or isis or the ira which i just thought was and you know they're saying it's their policies they they think their policies brought it along but i just think that's very sad that that uh, that a chunk i mean i think it was 29 30 one one was 29 percent on one of the attacks and 31 percent was blaming the government now um you know, in saying that, not not a, it was not a you know fifty percent majority. Some people just didn't have an opinion, but I just think that that's really uh, sad and somewhat uh, disgusting that they blame their uh, 
that they blame their government more than the actual terrorists for those acts. Um, so I have a lot of Irish ancestry and English ancestry, um, as you could maybe tell with a lot of my uh, coverage, and also from and Scottish ancestry as well. I mean, uh, about 99% of my ancestry comes from the British Isles. So I keep up with um, a lot of this stuff, and the IRA is one of the most awful organizations and probably the most gruesome uh, Western terrorist organization in, in Europe and in the U.S. And and to blame the go British government more than the IRA, who is just an awful organization. And it doesn't matter if you agree with Irish nationalism, Irish Republic republicanism, if you should have a unified Ireland. There's political ways to do that through votes, and you don't have to do it through terrorism like the IRA wants to. And for them to say that it's more the British government's fault, I think is just uh, really crazy. But I guess I think that really shows how far left that Labor has went under Jeremy Corbyn. And that's why, like, uh, Ian Austin, who was a Labor MP who has left the party, I, you know, that's probably a big reason why. I mean, Jeremy Corbyn... And uh, John McDonald, who is the shadow chancellor, um, are two extremists that have taken over the Labor Party. And a lot of the membership supports Jeremy Corbyn. And so it, it's just crazy how far left that party has went. And um, and they also put together their manifesto, which um, so they if they get elected, they want to um, have a 32 hour work week. There's some other things in the manifesto. I would encourage everybody to uh, look at it. It is a pretty far, very far left uh, manifesto. Um, so it will be it'll be interesting to see how this polls and how they go forward. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you could hit the like and subscribe button, it'd be greatly appreciated. I um I'll try to do these once a week where I just get on here and ramble around about the news. But uh, so thank you guys so much and have a great day.